Welcome to the History Den YouTube channel. This is the first video in the World War II series that deals with the events on the Eastern Front. But before we get to World War II, we are going to take a look at the rise of Joseph Stalin in Russia. And his rise would see him come to dominate both the politics and army of one of the most powerful countries during World War II. So in this video and in the next video, we will examine Stalin's time before the struggles with the Nazis broke out. And of course, this is a rise that would eventually lead to Stalin becoming one of the world's most powerful dictators. Joseph Stalin was born in the city of Gori, which is part of the modern-day country Georgia. Like Napoleon, and like Hitler, he was not native to the country he came to dominate. Now, Stalin's early years, like many revolutionaries, were troublesome and repressive. Stalin's father was a raging alcoholic, and he endured regular beatings and torture. Stalin was never able to establish himself in a normal school setting, as he changed homes no less than eight times. Stalin's hometown Gori was also dangerous and increasingly lawless. Gangland warfare was the order of the day in Gori. There is little doubt that this chaotic environment instilled an iron will in Stalin, and it was that iron will he would become well known for many years later. It was during these turbulent early years Stalin became permanently disfigured. He contracted smallpox at the age of seven. A few years later, he was involved in several accidents with horse-drawn carriages. But it was the smallpox that left his face forever scarred, and the accidents made his left arm utterly useless. Stalin, against the wishes of his father, enrolled in the Gori Theological School at the age of 10. Stalin was an excellent student, as it turned out. He often graded out at the top of his class. It was here in these early formative years that Stalin was forced to learn Russian because his native language was Georgian. Stalin would attend other schools as well and, as always, excelled in many subjects. In 1898, at the age of 19, Stalin joined the Russian Social Democratic Labor Party. It was shortly after this that Stalin was introduced to the writings of Lenin. One year later, in 1899, Stalin left school to permanently become a revolutionary. Without a job or a degree, Stalin had no source of income. He was living close to poverty, but he soon developed an early friendship with Lev Kamenev. Kamenev would support Stalin, and over the next decade, both would rise to become powerful leaders in the Communist Party. The Social Democratic Labor Party in the early 1900s was not united. Two factions fought for supremacy, the Bolsheviks under Lenin and the Mensheviks under Julius Martov. Stalin and Kamenev chose Lenin's faction. Shortly after this, Stalin finally met Lenin and eventually organized much of the Bolshevik Party's activity in southern Russia, especially in the Caucasus. Stalin had a dual role of bolstering the Bolshevik Party and causing as many problems as he could for the local authorities. In these early years, Stalin's utter ruthlessness began to surface. He used mafia-style tactics to organize Bolshevik militias in the South. Murder, extortion, and robbery were the norm. Nothing was beyond Stalin. These heavy-handed tactics brought in thousands of rubles to a cash-starved party and began to solidify Stalin's place in Lenin's inner circle. Stalin's rise allowed him to attend both the 4th and 5th Congress of the Russian Social Democratic Labor Party. Stalin would meet many of his future political allies and enemies at these events. It was only natural that Stalin's revolutionary activities and crimes eventually garnered the attention of the ever-watchful Okhrana, the secret police of the Russian Empire. He was detained in 1910. The secret police created a rather extensive file on Stalin, complete with mugshots and biographical information. In 1911, Stalin was banned from the Caucasus and exiled to northern Russia. He was released shortly thereafter in 1911. Stalin moved to St. Petersburg, where he began to work on the weekly Bolshevik newsletter, Pravda. But Stalin never seemed to escape the notice of the Tsar's secret police, and between 1912 and 1915, he would be exiled several more times. In 1912, Lenin broke away from the Social Democratic Labor Party and formed his own party called the Bolsheviks. Stalin eagerly joined up with him and proved to be a very effective organizer of men as well as a capable intellectual. Among other activities, he distributed propaganda, provoked strikes, staged bank robberies, 
and even ordered assassinations. His skill and charm won him the enduring respect of Lenin, and he rapidly rose through the ranks of the Bolsheviks. By this time, Stalin was one of Lenin's most trusted deputies. The Bolsheviks' rise to power can be directly attributed to the Russian military collapse in World War I. In 1914, however, the war was very popular. The Russians pushed into Germany and achieved some initial successes. But all of that changed very quickly. The German army routed the Russians at the Battle of Tannenberg in 1915. Eventually, the Russian army was pushed back, suffering staggering losses. Millions of Russian soldiers were either captured or killed during 1915 and 1916. The army could only replace these losses by taking laborers off the farms. This led to a huge increase in food prices as production began to stagger. These conditions led to a complete collapse in the morale of the Russian army in 1917. At first, many of the rank and file joined the revolution. Later, there were even mass desertions of the officer corps. Without a loyal army, Tsar Nicholas had no choice but to abdicate in 1917. A provisional government was formed and the centuries-old Russian Empire was at an end. Initially, the provisional government was ruled by the revolutionary Alexander Fedorovich Kerensky and several other political groups. Kerensky armed many of the workers, especially in Petrograd, but it was many of these workers who ended up joining the Bolsheviks. The Bolsheviks had no intention of sharing any power, and in October 1917, they would seize power from Kerensky. Stalin used Pravda to bolster the position of the Bolsheviks, and it was shortly after this that Lenin formed a five-member Politburo, which included Stalin and Trotsky. Lenin quickly had all other political movements banned. The only party with legal standing now was the Communist Party. A new era in Russia was underway. Lenin had the Tsar placed under house arrest. Eventually, on Lenin's direct orders, the Tsar and his family were executed on July 17, 1918. And so this ensured a final and complete break from the last remnants of the Russian Empire. Despite the arrest and death of the Tsar, various groups fought on against the Bolsheviks. These anti-Bolshevik forces became known as the White Army, and the Bolshevik forces became known as the Red Army. Stalin joined the Red Army and took control of units in Tsaridison, which eventually would be known as Stalingrad. Tsaridison was a key supply center that controlled the vast oil reserves in the south. Stalin was able to keep the city from falling to the White Army. As always, he resorted to brutal tactics. Many officers in the Red Army were put to death, and the local population was terrorized at all times. Trotsky, nominally Stalin's superior, complained to Lenin of Stalin's brutality. This would be the start of a long rift in power struggle between Trotsky and Stalin. By 1919, the Civil War was over and had been won by the Bolsheviks, and so Stalin returned to Moscow to join Lenin and the rest of the party elite. In the next video, we will cover Stalin's rise to dictator.